Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. Today, I am here to wish you a very happy Dossember. You heard me right, Dossember. I recently learned about Dossember from Mr. Lurch's Things, which is a channel. I'll put a link up there in the corner. You should definitely go and check out his channel. Spoiler alert, it's about more than computers. <laughs> so definitely check that out. But in any event, I decided that I wanted to participate in Dossember as well. And in addition to Mr. Lurch, there are a variety of other YouTubers who are participating. I'll put their names down below in the description so you can check out their channels. And for my Dossember video, I wanted to show you one of my more recent purchases. This happens to be a Wi-Fi to serial modem that I got from the old net. I'll also put a link in the description below if you're interested in checking it out after you see what it's all about in this video today. But it's a cool little piece of tech. It's got this really cool 3D printed case, a couple of little buttons on top for resetting the device as well as uh, setting it to factory defaults. So very cool piece of tech. Today, we're gonna have a look at it. And before I forget, when you purchase your old net RS-232 to Wi-Fi modem, you also do get some instructions. I've got a couple of instruction sheets here that tell you about how to use it. And these instructions are available on the Tindy page for the modem. But this was very helpful for getting started with the device. And to assist us today in reviewing this device, I've pulled out my Tandy 1000 HX, which I love to use because it shows just how much utility you can get out of an old computer. So when you first set up the modem, it will be set up as 300 baud, 8 bits, one stop bit, no parity, and X on, X off software flow control. I've actually changed mine to be 57.6 so that we get a little bit uh, quicker connection but I'll definitely show you some of the settings and options available for this particular device. When we first power on, we get this nice display here telling us a little bit about the device. So the oldnet.com, serial Wi-Fi modem emulator, the software build number, as well as where you can find the software for it. And it's connected to my Wi-Fi network since I've already configured it, and it has an IP address. Another thing you can do, and I apologize that I'm having to block my password here, but if you type ATNV, you can see the baud rate, SSID, the busy message, as well as the default settings for the modem, as well as your speed dial settings if you want to call up a predefined BBS. If we type the traditional ATI command for information, it'll show us that we're connected to a Wi-Fi network. This is the MAC address, gateway, subnet, as well as the server port and the web config, which is really kind of cool, so you can actually configure this via the web. I haven't tried that yet, but that looks like a neat thing to try. Another nice thing about this is if you're not sure what to do, you can type AT help. And you'll get all sorts of information about the different commands. Dialing a host, you can dial it by doing ATDT space the host name colon port if you want to use a specified port. Also got speed dials, setting speed dials. Whether or not you want to allow Telnet, I found that I had to set this option 18 net one in order to be able to Telnet to my Raspberry Pi, for an example. So we'll look at that as well. You can also do things like change the baud rate, which I highly recommend <laughs> because 300 baud is pretty slow. And also there are commands for setting the SSID and password, as you can see here, as well as flow control and turning on the Wi-Fi hanging up command mode. So a lot of these commands where applicable track your typical modem commands. What I went ahead and did with mine was set the baud rate. And then from there, I did an ATNW to write it. And actually I think I did an ATC1. And of course that telnet command that I showed you earlier as well, set all those commands, did an ATNW. And now whenever I power down the device and power it back up again, all of those settings are going to be set. And naturally I chose a rather fast speed of 57.6 so that we can experience the internet of BBS in a very fast fashion. Just to demonstrate, if you choose to buy one of these, and I hope you do because they're cool, um, if you wanted to change the baud rate, you're going to have to change your terminal settings in your program as well. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that by doing an AT and SB equals 115200. And it'll come back and say, hey, in five seconds, I'm switching the speed. 
Now in Bananacom, you can do an Alt M and then come down to the more section and then choose the rate. Or ultimately you could do an Alt R and you would be set. Great. So now let's do an AT command and the modem comes back and says OK. You can see that after I switched the rate, we got some garbage until we set our settings. And I actually much prefer this even faster setting, so I'm going to write it to memory. And now, like I mentioned in the previous segment, the next time that I power the device on, it will be all set. So let's go ahead and start calling some BBSs. On the oldnet.com information sheet that came with the modem, they suggested you try bbs.eotd.com. So I'm going to do an ADATDT bbs.eotd.com. You'll see it dial there. Checking for ANSI. We're going to choose English ANSI. And we'll say we can display ANSI color graphics. And there it is loading up, just like you remember it. Isn't that cool? Now, I don't have an account here, and I'm probably not going to register for one, but I did at least want to show you that. And that's how you connect up here. Let's look at a few more things. So in past videos, you've also seen me telnet to my Raspberry Pi. You can also do that with this device. We'll go ahead and log in as Pi. And then we can launch programs like VI. And you've also seen me launch programs like MUT. However, I think that the way that this is coming across is making things a little bit difficult. So I need to actually do some research to figure out how to set the proper terminal emulation. But I would suspect with a couple of tweaks, you'd also be able to open programs like MUT. So there you have it. We see that we can telnet to a BBS. We can telnet to a Raspberry Pi. There's one other site I wanted to try. Let's give it a shot. And this is a local device on my network. Hey, wait a minute. This is a BBS running on my local network? Yes, indeed it is. <laughs> I have downloaded Renegade BBS and installed it on my Pentium 2 system. And I will provide some links below to show you how to do that. And this is pretty cool. I'll go ahead and hang up on my user for now, I know. Not a nice thing to do as a sysop, but here you can see we've got Renegade up and running. And the way that I did this was to download from Renegade's website this pre-made package. And it actually has more stuff than we'd ever need for what we're trying to do. It includes software for bridging uh, your BBS to a web-enabled BBS. I didn't do any of that. I am running on bare metal DOS here, as you can see. Uh, I'm also running a Fossil driver, and that Fossil driver allows me to host Renegade as a Telnet service. So, to do that, we can start Renegade by going BBS, in this case, RL Fossil, which happens to be the Fossil driver I'm using. I'll put a link in the description below for that as well. And then RL Fossil 0 to say emulate COM1, 1 to allow one connection, and then Renegade. And by entering that, we are now up and running with a simulated modem, which will respond to Telnet requests. So with Renegade set up, I've went ahead and reconnected back in. Let's go ahead and create a new login. Now this is really reliving the days. Enter your handle. Well, it's got to be Retro Tech Chris, if it'll allow it. Your real first and last name, Chris L. Are you calling from the United States or Canada or other country? Enter your city. Uh, this would be any town. Enter your state abbreviation, Virginia. Your gender, date of birth. <laughs> uh, wouldn't you like to know? We'll say I was born in the year 2000. That's believable, right? Is all of your information real and correct? Absolutely not. Which terminal emulation do you support? We're going to go with ANSI. And would you like this to be auto-detected in the future? Yes. And then you get to choose a password. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's the combination I have on my luggage. And we can enter it again. There it is. What was your favorite pet's name? Uh, Commodore? 
Perfect. Great. So there's all of our new user information. Uh, I guess the <laughs> only downside of choosing a username that long is every time you log in, you get to type it, but that's okay. But our new user information is all set. Let's go ahead and hit Q to quit and save. And now we get to send an email to the sysop saying, I would like to join your BBS. Hi, can you add me please? Thank you. And from there, I think we go enter, forward slash, and then I think we hit S to send. And we don't need to add a tagline, so there it is. Perfect. So we have 46 hours left to play. Last logged on on 12.05.2020. And some other various information about me. We do have a color monitor with an 80 by 24 screen size. Perfect. You can see that the last couple callers to call were basically me. And now we're presented with the main menu. So we've got a time back, your info, feedback, personal, as well as the email menu, as well as file bases. We can go have a look in there. You can scan for new files. We can do a list of areas. Look in the uploads area. And now that we have the uploads area selected, we can list files. And from there, allegedly, we can also download a file. However, it doesn't work. Now, files are all fun and games and good and great, but I think the area that people really liked these old BBSs for were online games. So here's a list of Doors games that are supported, uh, that were distributed with this particular um, Renegade installation that I pulled. I'm actually a little surprised that um, Trade Wars isn't on here. That was a popular one back in the day. But so was Usurper, as I remember. So let's go ahead and load that. So one thing I have noticed is that this NPC activity takes a very time to load inside of what is this Doors game called Usurper. Uh, this should load quickly, so maybe my Pentium 2 system is a little bit misconfigured. You can see the console over there. Uh, maybe I need to load Sherry XE or something like that, and that would fix it. Uh, maybe if I actually read the directions on how to set up Renegade as opposed to downloading a distribution, we could get that loading a little faster. So NPC is finally loaded. Now we are checking marriages, as well as NPC teams on the move. Some computer players are forming a team, Army of Muscles. We also have the rough abouts. The NPC teams are allowed to attack and it's scanning combat status, attackers and targets. Bounty hunters are on the move. All deeds are done. Press any key and press another key twice. So there you have it. Now we're in the game. Uh, I really don't know how to play it, but I'm sure there are some of you who do. We can at least look at the instructions. August 2004. Wow. So this will tell you all about how to play the game. Lots of directions. Wow. Well, I think you get the idea. I guess we could go non-stop if we wanted to scroll the rest of it. <laughs> it just seems to keep going. Excellent. Well, I think we'll go ahead and pop out of that. And we'll quit to the main menu. So we do have some other items here. We can look at user lists and system info. Tells you a little bit about it. System news. Not a whole lot going on. Let's see what happens if we choose random quote. When you go for job interview, I think a good thing to ask is if, they're, if they ever press charges. <laughs> So that's pretty much the story. Let's go ahead and disconnect. And I want to try one more thing. 
How about we now experience this at 300 baud? Just a little bit of it. All right, I'll go ahead and switch the serial port. I think it was Alt-R. Indeed. All right, let's dial in. Wow, <laughs> even typing the commands is slow. Wow. So that's my Raspberry Pi. Woo. Oh my goodness. I can only imagine what 110 baud was like. But I can also imagine how excited people were when they finally were able to connect across the country, even if it was at 110 baud. It's all a matter of perspective. Let's get out of here. And let's try going to the BBS. <laughs> so if we pan over to the terminal, we can see that it's already loaded and up and going. And as we come back over to the Tandy, we can see that it's going to be a while. Uh, I really like you guys, my audience, so I won't subject you to this torture, but you can see that 300 baud is slow, especially when drawing ANSI art. So there's one more thing I do want to look at, and that is the message that we sent over to join the BBS. So for that, we've come over here to the bulletin board system menu, and here you can see Renegade BBS with some details, the current date and time, as well as calls, uh, posts, emails, new users, and feedback. And we can now go and read mail, so let's hit R. And one thing you will notice is you can read any user's private messages. Uh, yeah, nothing is private here, but I think if we press one, that's going to be the system operator. And there you, we can see that we have three messages, the latest from RetroTech Chris with a new user application. And for this particular BBS, I think you are added automatically, but you could configure the rules if you wanted to say, wait until a sysop approved a message before a user was allowed to join. So that wraps up my DOS Simber video for you. What a really cool piece of retro tech, this RS-232 to Wi-Fi modem. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will put in the description below a link to it, as well as all of the software that I used today, in case you want to repeat this experiment for yourself, and I hope you do. One other thing I did want to point out is, as you noted, we did use Bananacom on the Tandy. There are different emulation programs you can use for terminal emulation, such as, say, Telex or Terminate. I did try Telex on the Tandy, it didn't work, probably requires a 286 or higher processor. I did try Telex on my Packard Bell Pentium system and it worked perfectly fine, so you can definitely use different programs. Anyway, please do subscribe to the channel, there's a lot more content to come. And ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when new content is posted. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If not, feel free to give it a thumbs down and tell me why in the comments if you don't mind. Hope that you have a very happy holiday if we don't see you before then. Can't wait to see you till next time. Bye-bye.